Well, hello, you beautiful person. I'm Dylan John, and like we do on the channel, let's cut out the fluff and jump into it. So let's use the magnetic mask to do three different things with this shot, all in three different ways. Three different ways of using the magnetic mask. So the first thing we're gonna do is kind of your typical way. Go to the magic wand button and hit add magnetic mask or press option, command, and M. And then all you do to use the mask, it's really simple, you just click the areas that you want to mask out. It's not getting that good of a selection here. So hold option and that's going to subtract part of the mask. And then all you do is hit analyze. It'll go forward. If you start it in the middle of the shot, it'll also track backwards as well. And that's real time, I'm not speeding this up. It's incredibly fast. So once this is done, this is basically what we have. You can change the feather by adjusting this. It just makes it a softer adjustment around the edge of whatever you're masking out. So let's leave it here for now. And we're gonna turn this off. And I will show you why in a second. This magnetic mask is gonna be the first use case. The second thing we're gonna do, and the other way that you can apply the magnetic mask, is either, say, looking up your color wheels, color board, uh, color curves, and applying it directly to your viewport, or, I guess it's technically four ways that we're going over this, or you can just add a color wheels. So if you don't have your inspector open, just press Command-6 and add, actually we're gonna do a color curves. They're my preferred color tool of choice. You're gonna hit your mask button here and we're gonna apply a magnetic mask just from this little icon. This will be available in any color correction type that you add, which is kind of nice. And you're gonna do the same process, select and track. As far as I know, uh, we can't copy a mask and apply it to another layer just yet. However, I assume that'll change in a future update because it only makes sense since the object tracker is the same way. So once that goes through, we'll hit done and let's start with this other use case. So the first thing I'm gonna do, pull this up so we can see a bit more, switch to outside. So this will affect everything outside the mask. We're gonna use the picker here and change the hue of this color curve. And let's go with something like a cyan. We're gonna push up and increase the amount of cyan in our shadows and lower mid-tones just by pushing up here. And you'll notice that's adding in a lot of that cool tone to the shot, specifically in these shadows and lower mid-tones. If you don't know how to read this curve, you have the shadows towards the bottom, mid-tones in the middle, and highlights towards the top. So if you push up here, you're adding that color into that area, those luma values in your shot. And if you subtract, you're taking out that color which adds its opposing color. So let's leave it here for now. I like how that looks. And then we're gonna go down and select inside so that whatever adjustment we make affects the inside of the mask that we made. So let's go to the hue selector. Let's select orange and skin tones generally lie in the mid-tones. So we know her skin's gonna be right about here. It's a little bit brighter. So probably in this area. And we can also verify this by using the picker and just selecting her skin, and it's right about here, right where we thought. So we're gonna push up here, and you'll notice that this is just increasing the amount of orange in the mask, which I wanna go for a punchy look. So for this instance, it works out pretty well. We can also bring down our shadows here, and if you notice in her hair, this is gonna subtract some of that orange, kind of cooling it off, giving us a nice gradual increase to the brighter orange of her skin. And let's double check that her skin is accurate. Command seven. And it is pretty much on the skin tone line right here. No matter your race or ethnicity, skin will always fall on this line or should always fall unless you're going for a stylized look. And while we're still adjusting the inside of the mask, let's go to the Luma curve, which adjusts the brightness in your shot. And let's bump up the brightness of our highlights here by pushing up towards the top end. And then let's create a, an S curve here. So this is going to make the shadows and lower midtones a bit darker, just adding some of that contrast back in. And let's do something similar for the outside, except I may not even raise the highlights, make it just a bit moodier. So just dropping our shadows and lower midtones down. Eh, maybe I will, let's raise it up just to make it a bit more even, okay. And so if we pop back out and we turn this off and on, here is what we did with the magnetic mask 
play this out looking pretty good we can also feather it a bit more if we want or a bit less depending on what we like something else i'm noticing is that there's this way too sharp outline of an edge and i thought that was the mask that we made but turns out that's just the shot so if you're wondering it wasn't me and the next way that you can apply the magnetic mask as well as a another use case for it is just by taking an effect of yours and dragging it directly to the viewport so let's click and release and we'll start selecting the areas that we want uh, we probably want to deselect the middle here so we'll hold option and do that it's looking pretty good and we'll hit analyze and you'll notice that the mask is a different color that way it just makes it easier if you have multiple masks on different things in your shot you know which mask is which. We'll hit done, and you'll notice that the radio blur is affecting her, which, unless you're going for a crazy look that your client or your viewers probably won't like, then, uh, then you're gonna wanna change this. And the way we can change it, or invert it, rather, is by going to this drop-down menu and then hitting invert. And this just takes that radial effect that we added and instead of it being applied to the inside of the mask it's now applied to the outside of the mask and then we can feather it if we want let's just do a little bit of a feather and way less radial blur i want this to be very minimal i'm just kind of using this for the example so this is all it did kind of just blurred the edges just a bit more maybe for the example we'll just bump it up something right about there and let's feather it even more than that. Now you might be asking, well, what was that first magnetic mask that we did? What was that for? If we hold option and drag up, let's turn on that first correction that we made. And let's add a title in between these two clips. And now you may see what we're doing here, although we can't really see it right now. Let's bring this up. Put it right about here and then just make some adjustments to it. So basically we went from this to this just with a few simple adjustments using the magnetic mask and I have a lot more videos coming out using this tool so make sure you subscribe if you want to learn more and uh, improve your skills and do me a huge solid hit the like button and comment below that really helps me out with these free tutorials and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time